Good morning. If you are watching us live, please feel free to say hello. Pip here and I've got next to me, you can't see us obviously, my eldest son Michael as well is going to be joining us on this draw along. So feel free to say hello. Um, if anyone is watching live and can just let me know that the mic is working okay, that would be great. Um, just so that I don't rumble along talking to myself. Um, today's theme is going to be the guinea pig. We're going to be drawing uh, our little guinea pig here is a tricolour guinea pig black black ginger and white i want to say um yeah just following on with the, the theme of domestic pets that we're studying this term last week we did a roxy dog so we drew a dog and if you joined us i showed you a technique for drawing black fur and obviously we've got black fur with the guinea pig as well so we'll be able to use the same skills as we did in our drawing of Roxy. So that's cool because we're carrying it through. So hi, Melissa, Tanya and Goodliff Home Ed. Obviously, I know those aren't necessarily your names. And oh, hi from Javan and Jesse. I hope I said that right, Shay. Um, thank you for joining us. Awesome. So if you're new, I can see there's a couple of new names here. Um, this is really relaxed. It's not like a real formal art lesson. This is here's how I do it. Here's some tips to how you can improve, have a go, we draw along together. And then if you want to, later this evening, we put up another post at 6 p.m. And if you want to share your artwork, then you can upload it as a comment on there and I'll give you some written feedback on what you've done amazing and what I think you could do to improve your art skills further. But I really don't believe that there's a um, right or wrong way of drawing. I don't think it's something you can be right at. It's not like a maths equation or something like that so there's no getting it wrong there's just getting better um hi from tilly hi from pi and hi from uh, hi to hannah as well um and amy wow also we've got loads of people so we're gonna get started so i've shown you the colors i've got i've pulled out just in case you want to get yours out as well so obviously um the black which is decreasing in size week by week going to be needing the black I've got a dark gray and then I've got that dark indigo light that I used last week for Roxy so that's to build up the black layers on the fur I've got a, a brown as well and then like a, a more reddish brown and then like a more mustardy color because I'm going to try and mix these to get that sort of gingery color on his fur as well and then I've got like a peachy pink um, because we can see some pink on the reference image just in the nose there and also on the purse purse paws even hi from georgia hi steph thank you thank you thank you right shall we get started then so i'm just going to start by sketching out oh no i've lost my black pencil hang on a second it's okay it's all good i've got it again i'm going to start by just using normal hb pencil to sketch out the rough outline so as always i do work a bit fast on this but don't feel like you've got to keep up you work to your own pace um i know sarah said it's, it looks hard it looks hard, but we just we don't think about the whole picture and how it needs to end up. We just do a little by little and we'll get there in the end. So as always, I'm going to start with his eyes. Now, this guinea pig is facing us face on. And this is quite an interesting picture as well, because the perspective shows him face on, whereby his face is obviously the focal point and his body is going to look smaller because it's behind him. So obviously, if you've drawn a guinea pig and you're trying to grow a guinea pig to scale, you would imagine the body to look bigger than the head. But because of the perspective of this photo, it's going to be uh, a new challenge for us, which is good, again, to sort of try new things and try new ways of drawing. So we're going to give it a good go. So I'm going to start by drawing the eyes, which I don't believe are complete circles and they're not complete ovals. They've got like this almond shaped to them. Now, I might have to keep adjusting this as I go, because I always like to make sure that the eyes at least are exactly as I want them, because I think that's an important focal point for any drawing of a, of a living thing. And then I'm going to sort of roughly plot out that I think the other eye goes about here. Now, I will probably keep adjusting these until I'm really happy with the shape because he's got very cute eyes. I say he, might be she. Um, he's got lovely eyes and I, I want to make sure that they look cute because if you get the angle slightly wrong, you can make an animal look angry or evil even and i don't want him to look evil i want him to look cute because he's adorable and what i'm also going to be plotting in is his markings so i'm going to start with the white stripe because that's quite an important focal point for him he's got this lovely white stripe down his nose this is just like a guinea pig i had when i was a little girl called patch he had 
exactly the same colour ends, except he had a little mohawk going down his his head and his spine. But he was the same colours otherwise. And then he's got this sandy colour, this ginger colour coming up from his eye. So we're just plotting this in to make sure that we get the markings right when we come to adding the colour. It goes around his other eye. So it only it ends at the top of his eye on the one that's on our right, but on the left eye, his right eye. It comes just underneath. You can see some ginger colouring as well. So we're going to plot that in. Just roughly sketching it at the moment. A guinea pig's eyes are circles. Yeah, when you look at them sort of straight on, they will look more circular. But again, because of the angle of this photo, we're getting a different perspective of the eyes. And that's why they don't look like perfect circles at the moment. You can draw his little nostril there. I can see couple of nostrils don't forget as well if you're working on an electronic device you can zoom in to see details a bit clearer if it makes it easier for you just see the bottom of his mouth there i'm going to come up let's see his cheek this black marking and his lovely little ear poking out from his fur they've got really delicate little ears skinny pigs they're like velvet they shouldn't be handled really because they're quite Fragile. Now I've noticed what I've done here is <laughs> not going to allow me to fit the body in because I've run out of space. So rather than what I'm going to do is I will come back to this picture at a later date. You carry on. Don't don't restart. <laughs> um, so that I can just focus on the, his face. But what I wanted to be able to show you guys was getting the whole body in. So what I'm going to do, and it just goes to show, doesn't it? <laughs> we all make mistakes. Um, it's not a mistake. I'm going to do a close up version of him later on. I'm going to sketch in roughly the body first of all, so that I don't have this mistake where I've not allowed myself enough space for his body. So just roughly speaking, that's what I'm going to, so you can see I've had to move the face down now to this point of the page. And we try again. This is why it's important, you know, it, it would be very easy for me to get really frustrated with myself. And, oh, that's, that's you know, went wrong right from the start. It hasn't gone wrong. I've just decided, actually, that's not how I want this picture to go. So I'm going to put that aside and work on a different one. So we we'll start again with his eye. And then plot across to where the other eye is. Quite a wide gap between the two. And then I'll get that stripe in again. So it's, but mine has a round head. Is that okay? As I said, with artwork, there's no right or wrong way of doing things. There's just your way of doing things. So if you're happy with it and you don't want to change it, just keep working on it. I wasn't happy with what my previous drawing was because it just wasn't going to allow me enough space to um, get the whole image in, which is what I wanted to do. It might have been, and another day I just wanted to focus on the head, but today I really wanted to try and get the whole body of his uh, of this guinea pig in place. And now I think his eyes look a little bit too big in proportion to the rest of him. So I'm just going to adjust, adjust, adjust as I go along. And some of the adjusting I do um, when we're actually shading, you'll see that I make changes as well. So this is just the rough outline. And you can keep playing with it until you're you're happy with your form. And the way it looks you don't have to rush this step at all you can keep if you know that getting the outline and the form of your animal is the is the bit that you find tricky don't rush it just try and keep up because this is like i say it's not a tutorial or such this is just us drawing along together so it doesn't matter if you're further ahead than me which most people are because i obviously spend too long um or if you need a bit more time so I'm a little bit happy with that form now. I'm just going to sketch in that little ear. And then come over to do this little ear again. I feel like I've been here before. 
And when I come to drawing in that fur, when we're shading with colour, pay attention as well to the strands of the fur. So here on his nose, he's got really short fur. Um, and then up here by his ear, ears, you can see they're longer strands. So we're going to try and do that as well. Claudia's put pit, I froze. Have I still frozen? Or are we good? We need to keep at least two guinea pigs because they are herd animals. And if there's just one, they can get very lonely. That is true. Yes, I did just read up on that. When I was a little girl, we only had one. Um, and he used to talk to us every time we kept him in a hutch in the, like the conservatory area. And every time we uh, walked into the kitchen area that joined to it, he'd start squeaking to us. And obviously he thought that we were his herd animals. So he'd get very excited to see us. But in, in hindsight, we probably should have kept him with a little friend. So he wasn't so lonely, but yes. And they normally live in big groups. So they should be kept at least with one other guinea pig, ideally. And I remember as a young girl always hearing that you could keep guinea pigs and rabbits together. But apparently that's not a good idea because the rabbits can bully the guinea pigs a bit. I imagine the get, uh, there's quite a size difference between most rabbits and guinea pigs. No freezing here. Okay, we'll crack on then. Hopefully, whatever the issue was, it has now resolved itself. Right, so I'm going to plot in these lines. Now I'm looking at the markings on his fur and trying to get them in the right places initially. And this is, again, where you'll see that the shape is changing now because I'm not, I'm not up here at all for his body. But that was just to allow me to proportion things out properly. line there within the black fur how you get on michael all right all right <laughs> you don't sound too confident you having a bit of a nightmare mm -hmm. you just keep persisting don't we it will look better than the blank page you started with anyway whatever happens I can just see a little cut of toes poking out there and a paw poking out there as well. So I'll just sketch that in. But don't forget as well, you've got complete artistic license on your drawing. So if you want to add anything else in there, maybe a carrot that he's munching on or anything else, you can do that. All right, we're getting there. That's a little bit better. Ginny, we had two guinea pigs, but when the bigger one died, Sandy, the smaller one, Patch, seemed quite contented living on her own, but she got lots of cuddles to make up for the loss. Oh, that's cute. So that's funny because so my guinea pig was a Patch. My cousin, who lived a couple of doors down from me, had a guinea pig called Sandy. What are the chances of that? It's obviously very popular guinea pig names. And that was a long, long time ago that I was a little girl. So I just want to make sure I've got the eye shape right before I start adding the colour. Mine looks like it's just gone flat. <laughs> so it's what do you want me showing yeah. so i'm just going to show you what michael's done he's he's worried that his guinea pig looks flat so yeah, what he's laying, he's laying down but what i think you've done is you've added in some back feet that you can't see in the picture so if you take those back feet out it won't look like he's been splattered <laughs> no, no, he's on a sofa, he? oh you're oh you're using yeah. your imagination yeah. i like that i like that <laughs> right so I'm going to also map out those really important highlights to keep those little white bits in his eyes to make them look shiny and alive. So I'm going to make sure I keep, I draw them in just to, as a reminder when I'm shading, not to colour over that. So I'm going to go in with black on the darkest parts of the eye. Remember, you can enlarge so you can see the details a bit. There's also, I know, I'm pretty sure that guinea pig's eyes are actually like a dark brown, the actual colour of their eyes is a dark brown so I'm going to make sure I put some dark brown in there as well and what I'll probably do is mix blend the two together because you can't see a definite line between the brown and black so I'm going to add that in I 
and you can just see a sliver of white under his eye before you get this black, I, I refer to it as like animals wearing eyeliner, you've got this, the black um, outline around their eye that's much st stronger and sharper in colour. So I'm going to put that in as well. I'll go to the other side and do the same. The other side, you can't see quite as much detail in. And again, you can use your imagination and fill the blanks if you want to. So I can't actually see the brown, but I'm going to add a bit of brown because otherwise I don't think my picture will make too much sense. Stop thinking of it laying on the couch. And then... I always spend a little bit extra time on the eyes. They've got such fine details and it can really make or break a picture, I think. It's looking a little bit more like a guinea pig. So if you were here last week, you'll remember that we used blue, gray and black when we were doing the black fur. So to show you, if you weren't here, If you just colour solid black, in fact, I've got, yeah, I've got an example. So this was an example of just colouring with a black pencil. I know that's not very clear on the camera. It's a bit blurry. But this was building it up in layers with blue and grey underneath. And you can just see it just looks more like real black fur than that one does. So that's what we're going to do. So you start with a dark, like an indigo colour. Try not to colour too hard, as in pressing down too hard with a pencil try and do it quite softly and we'll build build it up and i'm concentrating when because again you can see those black it's all black and it'd be tempted to just shade it all black when you look there's there's different tones there's like a lighter color here and darker here so i'm focusing the blue in the darker areas And that being able to leave those sort of highlighted bits, the lighter bits will mean that you don't lose the form. So it doesn't just become a big black blob on your drawing. You can still see highlights and it still looks like a 3D form. So what other guinea pig facts have we got? So they're not actually related to pigs at all. They're rodents like rabbits, they're classed as rodents. And they don't come from New Guinea either. It's a bit of a mystery as to why they are called guinea pigs. They believe from where they were originally exported, which I think was South America, um, they went through Guinea in order to get to Europe. So they might have believed that they come from Guinea, but they didn't. They don't originate from Guinea. Fun fact. What else can I tell you about guinea pigs? They can, in captivity, normally live about seven years, but the oldest one, called Snowball, lived for over 14 years. Broke the world well record for the oldest guinea pig. It's been well looked after. It must have been well looked after. Now they've got quite complex dietary needs, so they're not, they're harder to keep happier with their food. They need vitamin supplements and things like that. They're more difficult to care for, really, than a lot of dogs and cats. So though they're considered really good pets for younger animals, uh, younger animals, for younger children, they actually, they're quite a big responsibility in terms of looking after them, caring for them. Let's find a guinea pig from Ravenclaw. What guinea pig from Ravenclaw? That's uh, a badger. No, no, Ravenclaw, I mean, like, a ra like he looks like... like oh, because you coloured like it in blue. Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> Getting back into Harry Potter again, are we, Michael? Yeah. yeah. Always been Harry Potter. Yeah. I have eight guinea pigs. Oh my goodness! Tell tell us all about them. Is that are they like a little family? Is there one that's in charge who's a bit bossier than the rest? 
I'm going in with a bit of a brown on this nostril. It looks a little bit brown. And then I'll go back in with a black. And I'm going to go some pink for the end of his nose. Just softly because it's in amongst the white fur as well. And then, so I've done the, the brown base on the fur. Now I'm going to go over with the grey. And notice as well, and I said, said this last time, try and move your pencil in the direction that you can see the fur is growing. And the fur doesn't all grow in one direction. It, move, it changes direction depending where it is on the body. So here it grows downwards from the eye. Here it's growing upwards from the eye. Mine looks like it's sleeping flat. That's, that's what you've got, Michael. Haven't you? you said yours is chilling out on the sofa. He's all sprawled out on the sofa. Your sofa. Oscar says, we rescue them and give old ones a home. Oh, how lovely. My favourite's called Misty. What colour's Misty? Oh, I'm going to assume it's a grey. Um, my guinea pig took to licking my face and hands. Oh, do you know, I remember my guinea Now that you've said it, I'd completely forgotten. You've just brought back a childhood memory of Patch. They've got the tiniest tongues. I think it's, I'm sure he likes the the, flake, the the salt that comes out of our skin naturally. I'm sure it was that that he liked. It's like a salt lick for, for us, for him. Or maybe it was just that he loved us and he was giving us lots of kisses. Yeah. Oh, Misty is black and white. Oh, lovely. What a fulfilling thing to do to rescue them as well. How you get on, Michael? Now good. This black band is actually quite a big band on him, so I need to extend out my, my shading. But again, trying to keep highlighted areas so it's not just a big black blob. Like a hat. You can give him a wizard hat because yeah. you've got raven claw in your head. <laughs> Magical guinea pig, why not? Yeah, because he's just like sitting on the bed with his wand. <laughs> he's on a bed now, not now. Oh, I know his wand could be a carrot. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, now I'm going in with a black. If you've ever seen a hairless guinea pig, they look like mini hippos. I have seen a hairless guinea pig. I've never touched a hairless guinea pig. I always wonder what that would be like. And why are they hairless? Is there a reason? Is it just a genetic thing? So longer strands up there as well with the shade in towards the top of his head. The fur gets longer. Oh, my hand's cramping up. I'm calling mine all three houses, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff. <laughs> Are we missing out? Um, what is it? Slytherin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be wrong around a rodent, wouldn't it? Because I imagine snakes would want to eat guinea pigs. Sarah's adding colour. 
And don't forget, if you are using watercolour pencils, I do add the water on in a bit as well so you can see how to paint your watercolour pencils. Never black, so I need brown. You've lost your black. It's like yeah. the most important one. Remember to keep referencing your picture, keep dashing back to it with your eyes, making sure that you're you're imitating the colours and the texture correctly. Don't keep work relying on your memory too much. I think I'm gonna try and get the pause in before I get Two coat away with all the fur. Now, see, because they're quite light, what I'm going to find is I'm going to struggle to um, get rid of the pencil lines after I've coloured it. So I'm just going to get rid of them and try and do it just with the shading. And this part of the image is slightly out of focus, so you do need to rely on your uh, imagination a little bit for this bit. go quite soft colours, not too harsh. Oh, didn't mean. <laughs> Picked up the blue without even realising. That's not what I wanted, I wanted black. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> Bless you again. Giddleth, I've called my drawing of the guinea pig Raven. It looks like you've inspired some people today, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got a name, Michael? Um, I was going to say Bluey, but that's children. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. Um, Samuel. Samuel the guinea pig. Samuel Cook. Samuel Cook. That was very specific. Where'd that come from? Uh, my head <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, he calls Cook at the end because he's really good at cooking. Yeah, what the guinea pig is? Yeah, okay. that's why he's got a character. You've got a good imagination, Michael. That's why he's got a character. You're writing a whole plot there, aren't yeah. you? Okay, I went, to, I went to scroll screen on my picture then instead of there. <laughs> We're not quite there yet, are we? Okay, so now I'm going to go in and try and create some of the ginger tones. Mine's Ginny Pig called... Ginny. ginny pig called Ron Weasley. Oh, your guinea oh. pig called Ron Weasley. I was reading that as Ginny, as in Ginny from oh, Harry Potter. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, yeah. Oh, I feel the pressure now to come up with a Harry Potter themed name. Um, Hermione. Somebody I think is gloriously understated. Um, Mrs. Weasley. What's her name? What's her first name? I can't remember now. See, that just goes to show how undervalued she is as a character. I can't even remember her name. Professor McGonagall? Nah. Uh, Professor, and Professor McGonagall, McGonagall would be a cat, wouldn't she? Because yeah. that's what she Professor. can... Oh, no, because he's in Slytherin, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, uh, Professor Flitwick. Maybe. Claw. I feel like we're sort of digressing now, away from yeah. guinea pigs and on to Harry Potter. Just do a Harry Potter lesson. <laughs> Draw the animals from the Harry Potter yeah. houses, yeah. Oh, yeah That's a good cool. theme. Yeah, and all like the other Harry Potter animals. Like well, cats. we're doing the mythical creatures, aren't mm. we, next term? So maybe we can get a, a hippogriff in there. Mm. <laughs> that's not a flying car, but that's a car, isn't it? I'm going to draw his ear in as I go because I worry that it's going to get lost in all the details of the fur otherwise as well. So we've got a bit of pink there, but there's also some browns and really sort of a gingery colour as well. I 
Pip, call your guinea, your guinea pig, Professor Dumbledore. Yeah. Oh, yeah, quite an important character. How did we forget him? Need to add a little beard on him. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's 14. <laughs> yeah, the oldest one, yeah. Hard colour in the blue. Do you want to show the blue? It's weird, isn't it? Adding the blue tones because it, it makes you think, "What am I doing? Yeah. This animal's not blue." But, <laughs> no. but if you stick with it, you get good results. Oh, it's frame pencil around. Right? Look like one of those. Um, uh, what are they called? Art teachers where they have all the pens in their fingers. I do. No, like me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're doing your uh, yeah. Doing the same as me, where you get to the point where you're holding everything in one hand. Yeah. It's, it's so that for me, it's so that I remember which brown I was using. For example, mm -hmm. you put it down, and you're like, and then you pick it up again, thinking it's the right one, and it's yeah. a completely different colour. Hagrid, that's a good name for oh, a guinea yeah. pig. I Hagrid. How can we forget Hagrid? I don't know. Well, no, he's not. He's he was in Hogwarts, but then he got. Oh, you're then. yeah. So you're playing a game at the moment that's pre Harry Potter times, is it? Before Harry Potter was there. Name. When's it oh, set? Yeah. yeah, it was like set like after Harry Potter's like um, it like he's like gone. He's moved on. Oh, okay. So Hagrid's still there. Thank you so much. Loved it. I will post our pictures later. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. I look forward to seeing it. It's going to Harry Potter quiz. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cool. Right, you can see with the ginger, I'm trying to mix different tones now to get different sh colours and shade so it's not I'm not just sticking with that mustardy colour I've got the reddish brown as well that I'm added into it. Have you tried using your peach with like the golden? No, you're getting it's a quite, nice effect yeah. from that. It's quite it's more bright, it's like not so dark. I was doing it for the ears. Jenny says I play Hogwarts mystery. Is that what you That's what I play. Ah, I was very that's, excited about this. That's, that's the one I play. Ah. So that's, yeah. You've just started playing it, haven't you, Michael? Yeah, so I just found it. So you're slightly obsessed with it right now. So I saw, I saw, I saw the game like a few months ago and I thought, oh, do I get it? And then I got it. I was like, oh, yes, yeah, I should, should have got it earlier. <laughs> this is my life now, is it? Yes. Yeah. Harry Potter. <laughs> Like is it like a problem solving game? Uh, no, it's like a yeah, like so you've got like talks and you can go, like, yeah, I like games like that where yeah. it's almost like tells a story, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have to really think about things, yeah, you have to, you have to answer questions and get to create your own character. What house have you been put into? Ravenclaw, Ravenclaw. I'm witty and intelligent. Is that did you have to do like a quiz to do that? Uh, no, dad just said I'm witty and intelligent, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was, I was really hoping to go in Gryffindor. I was like, mate, I'm not that brave. <laughs> oh, yeah, anyway. I must remember to keep that white stripe in there. Oh, Jenny Slivering. Slivering, what, what were the character traits sly, for that? Sly and cunning normally, isn't it? Yeah, I think sly and cunning. No, that's he comes good and door, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, need to, we need to watch a Harry Potter episode uh, movie okay, tonight. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you won't argue with me. Uh, I won't argue with that. I do like a Harry Potter film. Lots of stuff, first of all. What's your favourite like movie of Harry Potter? Oh, I don't know. I, I think the Philosopher's, Philosopher's Stone was my favourite because um, I'd read the books and it was very magical suddenly seeing that come to life. Uh -huh. So it was the excitement of it. Yeah, I think mine's the Goblet of Fire. Yeah, I think you said that before. Yeah, I love that one. 
We're digressing though. What other facts do we know about guinea pigs? Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, thank you so much. You are welcome. We are here next week. What are we drawing next week? Does anyone remember? Mm. Might be a cat. Could be a horse. Mm. Could be a goldfish. It's definitely something that we are we know that we keep as a pet traditionally in this country. Um can't think what the other ones I've chose now. Yeah, you got to catch up on that one. Yeah. Oh, we've got bunny as well, but that'll be the, the last one's bunny because that's just before the Easter oh, half term. So I thought it's appropriate to keep yeah, it, definitely. save it for that one. Could you, could you add like a chocolate egg? You could, yeah. Cat is up next. I thought so. I've got a feeling I've picked a blue eyed cat. I used to have a ragdoll cat years ago. And I saw that and I was like, oh, that looks like my old cat, Smeagol. If you want to get a cat, get a ragdoll. <laughs> well. Not so scratchy. Yeah, it depends on the cat, to be fair. And that's neat, that's then it's nice. horse, goldfish, and lastly, bunny. And then next term, that's when we're doing the uh, 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 the mythical creatures. So I need to have a think about that. So that's where we'll be drawing from reference photos in order to create a mythical fantasy mm. creature. I like added dragon's head. Yeah, so what we'll do is like look at the Komodo dragons oh, yeah. in order to then create a dragon and maybe use like an image of bat wings in order mm. to add wings to it, that sort of thing. I'll have a I'll have a think about it, but I think it'll be quite a fun one. Yeah, I think so Because so. obviously it's gonna be largely open to your interpretation. Oh, we could do like a sausage, a shark, and oh like um Scissors. <laughs> That'd be weird. Is that a, a mythical creature you're aware of or one you just made up? Uh, no, that's the that's it. We've got this game where you can like make any uh, animal. Oh, okay. And so you can make like you could add a shark and a sausage and something else. Okay. So when we do planes, can we draw a Lancaster bomber? Now that's gonna that's be a little bit tricky because we just do animals. <laughs> All I draw is animals. Um, so we're, we're exploring different animals and species, real and not so not so, not so real. Um, but yeah, definitely organic shapes rather than machinery. It's not that's not my forte. I'm not very good yeah, at that because you have to be patient. so accurate when drawing machines, and I'm not that patient, unfortunately. I mean, yeah, I'm good at drawing machines, painting, playing. Yeah, you it. like. Yeah, I've done it again. I've picked up the blue. <laughs> So it shows how close in colour that they are. So I, what I'm doing now is just going over where you've got the white bits. I don't want to leave just blank white spaces. So I'm just adding in some fur lines on his stripe there. Bye, Steph. Thanks for joining us. Like I say, between six and nine. So you need to make sure if you are, if you do want to upload your picture for us to feed back onto or me to feed back onto, um, the post goes up about six o'clock and I sit there until about nine o'clock writing feedback. So I, if you upload after nine o'clock, I can't guarantee I'll have time to revisit that. So if you do want some written feedback, just make sure that you um, upload in that time. And then... I I think I am about ready to start adding the water now. I think I'm done. You're done, Michael? Hey, he looks lovely. Love the colours you've got there. I've got this brown. I think it's much of the brown. So, if you are using watercolour pencils and you are adding water, don't forget not to load your paintbrush up too heavily. So, you're better to keep needing to dip it into the water and come back to, to your picture than to load your paintbrush up and lose control of the water on your page and it just becomes a bit of a um, swimming pool. Everything bleeds out and you want, you lose the definition between the colours. So what I, I, I'll even show you actually, when I load my paintbrush, you can see I literally just put the tip of the paintbrush in and then I'm swiveling it off trying to, so there's very little water actually on the brush and that helps me maintain better control over it. I'm drawing the carrot now. Are you adding the carrot now? Yeah, nice. oh, in the hat. 
spinach is a good one as well because you as well think about different colors so you've got orange in his fur but if you want to add a contrasting color you draw something green that will show like a nice contrast and mm. might finish the picture nicely as well you could do a griffin with images of lion and eagle for the mythological garden. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking, Joanne. Um, I was thinking like an American eagle or something, like a golden eagle, the wings, and then, yeah, absolutely lion. It's, it's, I'm quite looking forward to it. So I, d I don't know, how did it come about? We were talking about it in a lesson, wasn't yeah. it? And I thought, well, it could be done if we just use the correct animals that, that relate. Something a bit different, isn't it? Yeah, can't wait for it. And again, with even when you're painting, you want to move the brush in the direction that the fur is going. Same as you do with the pencils, otherwise that becomes a pointless exercise having done that because you want to show the fur growing in the, in the right direction. still maintaining that highlighted area not just merging it all together trying to keep the definition Melissa thank you bye thank you I look forward to seeing your work if you are sharing it later I've done it you finished did I hear you adding pen then? Huh? Did you just add pen? Could I hear yeah. you do using pen? Oh. I added like for the hat and the carrot. Oh, I need to put my signature on. Uh, yeah, you're not finished until you put your signature on. And then his name was also Sam Cook. Bye, Sarah. If you are wondering, these draw alongs, most of you probably already know this, are completely free for everyone. So if you know anybody else that wants to join in with, I'm not going to say an art class as such, because like I say, it's not, I'm not teaching you the right or wrong way. With our draw alongs, wants to join in, then let them know. There's no limit on how many people can join in. Yes, adults can join in as well with more and more. Well, it's, this is one of the reasons I like it, because I'm sitting down with Michael drawing as well. It's a group activity. And it doesn't cost a penny. Well, a bit of paper and colouring pencils. <laughs> but actual, in terms of what we pay out for as home editors, saves a few pennies. How long have I got? I've got 15 minutes. Oh, I need to get a speed on with my painting then. I think I should have added a bigger hat. It's not so big. We don't want to detract from the picture of the guinea pig though, do you? Oh, yeah, true. You can hear I'm concentrating because I uh, go very silent. <laughs> That's when you hear the birds too when you're like drawing. Oh, you can hear the birds outside. Yeah. yeah, starting to feel like we might be moving into spring soon. The weather's got really mild down here now. Yeah, maybe. Quite nice. We haven't even got the heat on today, have we? In here. No. Blimey. That'll save us a mortgage payment. Yeah, maybe we should start like when it's near springtime. Well, it's nearly spring anyway. Maybe we could um, start going outside and start drawing. Um, yeah, it's nice to get outside and in the sunlight and draw. I don't know that I'll be able to do the draw alongs outside though because no, of the lighting. Yeah, I was say it's a bit, yeah. It's nice weather for uh, trying outside. So we're stuck in the swim for I am spending quite a time on his face because this is 
obviously the focus on this picture. I don't want to rush that. I'll go to his paws now. Paws, just like hands, they're notorious, notoriously tricky to do. Just got to keep persistent with them and practicing them. They're not my favourite thing to do. Because you've got all the little joints and you've got symmetry to think about. Yeah, there's a lot going on. This lovely little gold band going over here. I might switch to a slightly bigger paintbrush for the big black thing. Might be finished ahead of time today, actually. Not bad going considering I had to restart. Mm. Well, no, you don't have face, so you just you just got to do it again. So yeah. It'll be more quicker, won't it? Do you think I should do like the Hogwarts class at the back of it? You can do. You've got extra time. Yeah. Well, then I'd have background as well as stuff in the foreground. I could do like Harry top over here. So it's like 3D. Oh, that's a whole other lesson yeah. right there. I could definitely do 3D. It's quite hard. Who's still working on their guinea pig? I always feel like I'm behind everybody else. <laughs> Me, Jenny, good, good, good. And Joe, okay, we're not the only ones. I was think, wondering if I was talking to myself now. <laughs> we're all good. Why does Hogwarts Castle have so many windows? Because it's a castle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who uploaded those pictures of Roxy last week as well. They were amazing to look at. I haven't showed you yet, Michael, but oh. that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, because I've got my dad's, wasn't there? I'm going to print them out and put them in a little album somewhere for her, I think. Mm -hmm. Put them on a wall. Yeah. <laughs> put them up in our little workshop, didn't they? Yeah, she'll be looking at herself. Is that me? <laughs> And if you have missed any of these draw-alongs and you want to give them a go, all of the past events. I know Facebook's changed its settings again, which is such a pain. You just get used to where everything is and they move it around, just like in the supermarkets. Mm -hmm. So um, if you you have to click on past events, you'll see all the, our previous draw-alongs so you can catch up on any that you missed. If any of them appeal to you. And I'm going live again this Friday at 11 o'clock um to answer anyone's questions about our courses our creative courses towards proper qualifications so if you're not on any of ours um and you want to know more about how it all works and what we've got on offer then feel free to join me if you're on one of our courses but you might want to think about another one in the future again feel free to join me i did a live um last monday where i showed an overview of each of our courses so there's nine different qualifications at the moment we offer in creative subjects. So like mixed media, um, effectively art and design, uh, cookery, textiles, all that sort of stuff, crafts based stuff. Um, so if you wanted to see what sorts of things you learn about and what we do in those courses, look on the past events for the live that I did last Monday, because I actually go through each course and show you all the different projects we do. Oh, that's not a bad little guinea pig. That was a good recovery from the beginning of the lesson where I uh, <laughs> had to start again. In fact, I've got a little bit of time to, just to refine some details. So I'm going to go in with slightly darker. 
on the ears to show the folds. So you can do this with watercolour pencils as well, providing your page isn't too wet or wet at all, ideally. You can then go in and add some more details with the pencils on top of the paint. So that's a good way of adding more fur texture because obviously with the paint you can lose that a little bit. So I'm just going in and sort of redefining those darker areas again. And then putting in those strands of fur, especially around the top of his head, you can, you can see that they're longer. You finished? Oh, wow, you threw your whole page up, Michael. I'll show you everyone in a second. And like little spiders too, like what, uh, in the... Episode. Aragons. Yeah. Shop family. I, I We've really got an all Harry Potter with this guinea pig, haven't we? <laughs> I only done two of them. When I started drawing the castle, I thought they looked like mountains. <laughs> started drawing mountains, I realised, oh, yeah, it's castle, isn't it? Nope. Oh, that So you can see here the page is still a bit wet and what that does is just start to break down the pencil onto the drawing so you get a really dark colour come through, which might be effective. I wasn't I wasn't going for it, but it's happened, so I'm going to work with it. Thank you, darling. I had a few years of practice, though, haven't I? Mine looks like a five-year-old drawing. No, don't say that. No negative talk. So yeah, that's, that's darker than I really would have wanted it to be because the paper was still slightly damp. And the whiskers, yes, so adding back and you can see some black whiskers and white. Why it's tricky to sort of depict on, black, on white paper, um, that's why a lot of artists will work on coloured paper, slightly coloured paper, so that you can get those highlights in a bit better but you can certainly get the whiskers in the black ones I'm going to draw in good thinking I'm trying to balance off this dark patch here by sort of doing a dark patch here as well. It doesn't look so obvious. Okay, I think I am done. I always get to this point where you think, oh, I could keep going, I could keep going, and then, and then I ruin it. So I'm probably going to put my pencil down any second now. And then finish it with a little signature and the date or the year that you've drawn, like a professional artist. Cool. That is my little guinea pig. Looks slightly different from the picture, so don't don't do what I do and go. Oh, that doesn't. That's wrong. The proportions are wrong. Put the picture aside when you're done, and then just look at your image and say, actually, am I pleased with that as a picture of a guinea pig? Is that recognisable as a guinea pig? Is it better than my last drawing that I might have done, or the last drawing of a guinea pig I, even that I did? Because if the answer is yes to any of those questions, then that's all good. You've you've made progression, and that's what it's all about. So, yeah, that's our little draw along for this week. Do you want me to show yours, Michael? Michael's just gone crazy now. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. So we've got a, a wizard's hat, a carrot, 
Hogwarts up in the background, is that? Yeah. What's all going on at the front? Oh, this is Hagrid's, uh, the Forbidden Forest, I'm yeah. going to guess. Yeah, yeah. Hagrid's hut. Yeah. yeah, I see now. <laughs> and, and that's what's so good about art is that look how different these two images are. And both of them are right. Neither is wrong because you can't get a wrong piece of artwork. There's just different. And there's your way of doing things. And that's what it's all about. So, um, yeah, that's it for this week. If you have enjoyed it, then obviously join us next week when we're drawing the cat. Um, and between 6 and 9 p.m., if you want some written feedback on your work that classes as being from a qualified art teacher, then pop it on to the post. Not this one. Not So don't post it onto the event or any of the adverts for the event. There'll be a separate post where... Um, Joe will upload a picture of this guinea pig, the drawing I've done, and then you'll be invited to comment on there with your image. And I'd love to see your work and I will give you some feedback. So hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for joining us both. And um, we'll see you again next Monday. Bye. Bye.